Okay, doing a little more work down here. It's finally time to rebuild the red bike engine from the death of the Tomos video that I posted earlier. Um, everything's kind of in the box and out on the bench here. And I got bearings today, seals today, crank. Uh, a little pin on the crank is taped down. And I didn't feel like replacing the circlips because I don't have any. Um, so I carefully disassembled while keeping the piston and the ring intact. I'll cover it up in a nice, uh, nice, uh, towel actually. Um, this is what I wanted to talk about. It's a black wheel of death. And if you wanted to see the damage, uh, there's the damage to the main gear. Pretty much chewed up the splines pretty good. I've done this to another bike. Um, it all comes down to not uh, flat or flipping over the little washer that uh, goes over to stop the nut from backing off. Nut backed off and the sprocket comes loose. Mm -hmm. Here's a 27 and there's the chewed out damage. So basically, if you don't have the nut tightened down all the way, um, this can back off here and then just chew out the splines. And you can guarantee that it chews out both of them. So seriously, make sure that nut is uh, good and tight. Um, I'm sure if you really wanted to, you could probably weld that up and get away with it until you could rebuild it or something if you're out in the country or whatever. Um, but saying that, you either got to weld it on the bike and make sure that you can try and keep that straight. Uh, the nut might help, but I don't know. Last di last ditch effort, right? You basically have to take apart the whole bike to get to this main gear. It uh, the the case it uh, sits on the other side there. I think right here sits through here. So you've got to take the whole case apart to get at it. Um, doing a little research on bearings, I wanted to work on the black wheel of death problem just a little bit. And this is the bearing I pulled out. Uh, it is an SKF 6006. Um, I was surprised to find an SKF in there, honestly. Uh... I, I really was. I didn't really spend the money on a replacement SKF, but what I did do is I got a bearing that had seals on both sides. Um, I asked for at least one side with a seal. They managed to have one with two. If I really wanted to, I'm, I'm sure I could probably get rid of one, but I don't think I'm going to. I'm going to end up freezing these bearings. We'll warm up, uh, warm up this guy and we'll drop it in. But here's something of note. We're all having problems with the black wheel of death. And basically you've got, you got a seal on this side that basically sits in front of this bearing. Um, but a whole lot of fluid still getting through there. It's leaking through this hole. It's leaking through the back of this bearing. And if you see how easy this, this actual bearing slides on, boom, it's down. I mean, it's not exactly a tight fit. Fluid's gonna get through there. Fluid's gonna come through here along the axle shaft or kickstart shaft. So, m my biggest thing is fluids getting straight through the bearing to the back of the seal. I mean, you've got nothing... You've got nothing in this bearing to stop any extra fluid just from flowing straight back to the seal. So everybody's thinking it's coming... Yeah, it's definitely coming through the axle shaft. I've seen that. It's coming through the back of here, through the 
edge because this isn't tight. I mean, that's that. That's not tight. Not tight enough to keep fluid out. This one, I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to do some work on that one. This one's gonna take a little bit of effort to get on. That's good, in my opinion. I'm not really educated on it all, but yeah, like it's it's tight. It don't want to come off now. So there's a lot of places for fluid to come through, but I mean the main one is right through the bearing. This uh, this bearing. It's not like it's covered by the engine case or anything else. So fluid's able to pass right through there. And then it just sits on the back of the seal. If the seal isn't good, or it's just gonna go past the seal anyway. It's so much movement going on there. I'm thinking that these seals might help some of the flow. I mean, it's not gonna stop it, but it, I'm thinking a lot of it's going right through the bearing, straight to the back of the seal. As soon as that seal starts to come a little bit loose, you're leaking all over the place. And that's what's happening on my blue bike right now. I want to see how long this lasts. I want to see if I pop out the seal. Once this is down, I shouldn't really have... Like, the seal on the back shouldn't go anywhere. Um, this area, the, the race, and not the race, but seating area and there might be enough diameter there just to hold the seal in place but I don't think it's going anywhere so I'm going to try the ones with seals I'm not going to pry those off I got that one specifically with seals um, I wasn't specific enough on the rest of the bearings they're all C3 but I wasn't specific enough and I got shields on a bunch of them so I'll probably pry a bunch of seals shields off on the transmission side of things let the ATF flow in those ones but uh, yeah we're going to give that a shot I'm going to go through the parts bin down here grab another main gear and uh, rebuild this engine all up uh, I think I do have some main main gaskets I do have a main gasket I do I do Poor motor becomes deckles. Okay, so that guy's going in there. I've got two extra sets of bearings so I can rebuild two engines. This is a Pook 45 millimeter um, Teflon kit. Uh, I've matched things a little bit here. And probably made that maybe a little bit too smooth. I have to rough that up. I uh, left that one kind of alone and just uh, matched them up. And made, tried to make sure it was a nice smooth flow. Um, to cut the skirt back a little bit on either side to make sure that uh, I didn't. There was basically kind of a weird kind of shelf going on in there. Uh, it would hit the skirt and then fall back into a hole and then. I'd kind of have some eddies and weird stuff going on on either side there. I'm not sure if I can really show that or not. Everything's still kind of a mess here. Uh, sorry. So basically, the skirt was coming up to about here. And I had skirt basically interfering with this whole flow, nice flow open area that I wanted. Um, the piston is wider than what the skirt is, much it seems. So uh, should have, I'm hoping fairly decent, uh, fairly decent flow in there compared to what I had before. And this thing just screamed to about 45 miles per hour for you guys. Uh, screamed up to there like it just took off like a bat out of hell and then it kind of leveled off and stayed there um which seemed kind of odd because i was hitting 80 85 with the uh with the other kit but this thing was all low end so different pipe different carb different top end 
totally different system, but uh, hopefully now I uh, get a little bit better flow, uh, see what happens there. I don't know, this side's probably a little too smooth, but uh, I don't know, it's not really too much smoother than what the rest of the case was when it was powder coated. So that's where I'm at. I'm going to do some more building here and uh, free some bearings and uh, get some bearings in some cases. Uh, probably going to use Moto Seal. Uh, seal up the case. Uh, I have a whole new roll of Carol Pack. So we can go over to the t-shirt area, the carol pack, and see if we can cut some gaskets on some vinyl later. That's kind of where I'm at moped-wise. Um, yeah, really surprised to see quality shit in there, but good on you, Tomos. More to come. <laughs>